I'm Tom Hartman. Welcome to The Big Picture. And the Republican National Committee has also cut ties with the firm, which it gave $3.1 million to register voters in swing states like Nevada, Colorado, North Carolina, and Virginia. Unclear how much damage this election fraud may have done on the elections in those states. This is the latest blatant election fraud committed by the Republican Party, which has been focused on non-existent voter fraud over the last two years as an excuse to rig the elections with their voter suppression ID laws. Now, for more on who these ballot bandits are and how they might impact the election, I'm joined by Greg Pallast, investigative journalist of the BBC and The Guardian, and author of the book, Billionaires and Ballot Bandits, How to Steal an Election in Nine Easy Steps. And I might add what we can do to fight back against it. Greg, great to see you. Great Glad to, to you see you, you, doctor. So, so <laughs> the scandal, yeah, right. The scandal hitting the RNC about voter registration. Uh, oh, boy. That's just, story just in time. I've already written the book on it. Okay. Uh, the, because, actually, I, I, when I saw this, I said, wait, I've read this before in the, a chapter called The Hunt for Triad. Let me tell you who these guys are. Okay. I've been tracking them for 17 years. Well, Spruill was created and under the payroll of these two guys. I don't know if you've heard of them, the Koch brothers, Charles and David. Okay. They had, uh, they have a company, Koch Industries, which until Citizens United made Frankencorp's citizens that could vote. It was illegal for corporations to put money into political campaigns. So they used a cutout called Triad Corporation. Um, and Triad then had a front group called um, Coalition for Our Children's Future, which they used to savage 25 Democrats, $25 million, wiping out the Democrats, taking over Congress for Newt Gingrich. You remember him, the guy with the oh, yeah. spider brain and the loose zipper? Yeah. Um, illegal donations to campaigns. And who set this up? Who is the third cutout? Nathan Spruill and his operation. So this goes way back. That was a crime then. They, that by the way, they- That was in the 90s. <laughs> that was in the 90s. So I've been following these guys with the Cokes since back then. So what they did was, one of the things we talk about in Billionaires and Ballot Bandits, is that what the billionaires do is they decriminalize their felonious behavior. But it was still a felony crime when the Cokes did this with Spruill. It goes way back. Wow. Then, that's not it. In, we followed them in 2004 in Oregon, and then we followed them again in, uh, now in Florida. Understand what they're doing. Besides the games of, of, of you know, we're gonna change your registration, et cetera, why are they putting slight, what they're doing is they're putting slight changes in addresses. The reason they're doing that is you combine that with another Coke operation called the Themis machine. I know it sounds <laughs> it sounds like Dr. Sounds, Moriarty, yeah, but then, no, the Cokes have something called Themis, which is a data mining operation, yeah. which they're working with Coke uh, with uh, Carl Rove, mm -hmm. who has something called Data Trust, which is under contract with the RNC. The Cokes didn't want to be under have any control from the RNC. They use these two machines, and they use this to do what's called caging. They send letters to people at these addresses, but they know the addresses are off. So when the letters come back, it says, do not forward, do not correct address. When it comes back undelivered and undeliverable, they challenge the voter. The voter doesn't know it till they show up. And if they're an absentee voter, about a third of Florida voters are absentee. It, when, they, when those absentee ballots go in, the voter doesn't know that they lost their vote because they were challenged. Wow. So you have to understand Spruill, not as some rogue that, oh, the GOP has to get rid of. But as a central operator who, for the 17 years I've been tracking him, has been a contractor for the Koch brothers, Karl Rove, and the Republican National Committee as part of their general operation of massive vote challenges. So he's so, not some weird rogue operator. Yeah, they're, they're treating him now like, oh, we had no idea that this yeah. guy, we had his picture up here a second ago, <laughs> that, that, that this, this guy was doing this kind of nasty stuff. Right, it's off like he's doing something in a corner. But yeah. understand, right, there, he there, there he is. See, yeah. here's how it works. You can't remove him from the Karl Rove and the Koch operations because what happens, one of the, the whole point of billionaires and ballot ban is, is to show how the Kochs and the guys behind Karl Rove, like the Iceman, Singer, Paul Singer, the Vultures, he's known. I didn't give them the names like that. They, their bankers gave them the names. We're saying that they've been doing this systematically with massive amount of money from these billionaires. And by the way, the reason I had Bobby Kennedy write the introduction and a chapter in the book is he's a law professor. He can say something I can't. He says this is a crime. This is a go-to-jail crime. His daddy wrote the law, the Voting Rights Act. He said this is a felony. 
and you should be in jail for these things. He says, Karl Rove, and see, he's, we are taking it not to sprule some schmuck that they found, that they pay millions to. He's the cutout man, as I've explained. Koch hired him to do dirty work. RNC hired him to do dirty work. But it's all part of a larger plan to challenge votes on a mass basis. And so that's why we call it how to steal election nine easy steps, because that's literally one way of doing it. Amazing. Uh, earlier we were talking you know, mm -hmm. on, on our radio program, and you said that already in Florida, yeah. tens of thousands of voters have been knocked off the rolls, don't even know about it. We're, I mean, right now the media is reporting that Rick, Rick Scott might start up his voter purge or might well, restart. Okay. The yeah. current Secretary of State of Florida makes Katherine Harris look like Thomas Jefferson, <laughs> okay, which is scary. Yeah. Um, and the same trick, a lot of people know, you know, know me as the guy that busted out, Catherine Harris, knocked off thousands of black folk off the voter rolls, calling them felons. In the election of 2000. In the election of 2000, their only crime was voting while black. And so, as a result, that's how Bush got elected. Now we are Bush v. Gore again on steroids. What's happening is even the same old felon purge trick. Uh, for example, I got the new purge list. You have a guy named Robert Moore, believe it or not, there are black people named Robert Moore. Some guy named Robert Moore committed a felony crime somewhere in America. Mm -hmm. So they looked for Robert Moore in Florida and knocked off all these Robert Moores. But they also knocked off Mrs. Bobby Moore. Mr. Robert Moore commits a crime, Mrs. Bobby Moore. You'll actually see right in the book now, the actual how, list. How do you know, or how do the Republicans know, as they're doing this down in Florida, that they're actually taking out voters who are likely to vote Democratic. Oh, well, let's put it this way. Right next to Mrs. Bobby Moore's name, it says B-L-A, because on, on all Florida voter registrations, the race is listed, and they're using this as a data match. It didn't matter that the first two names didn't match. By their algorithms, the, the, they're saying, oh, that's how Robert gets away, he changed his name to Bobby, and his sex. But since they're both B-L-A, we know that Mrs. Bobby Moore is a criminal. Now, who gives them these data sets? And the answer goes back to Carl Rove and Data Trust, the Koch brothers and the Themis uh, data mining operation, and a guy named Ken Langone, who's a $1 million donor to the Romney campaign. He's the guy that did the first blackout list for Catherine Harris. So the that same was, that was guys. was a, a corporation out of Texas. It was a corporation right. called Database Technologies, right. which operate in Texas, but they actually are based in Florida, but, uh -huh. but owned and put together by Ken Langone of New York, who gave the list to Catherine Harris and said, here's your criminals. And by the way, their own experts then and now are saying, well, we know that these aren't actually felons. They could be felons. Well, so could. So could Karl Rove. <laughs> in fact, in his case, we know he's guilty. But this is the gimmick. And by the way, how many people are innocent on this list of tens of thousands? The answer is every single one. Because I went to the attorney general, just like you checked with the alien, so-called alien list, and they couldn't find any, none, zero. And I said, so, because if you found the uh, felon voter, they would arrest them. they go back to jail. Right. They couldn't find any, but they're still on the purge list. The innocent people are still on the purge list. They haven't found any, but they're purging tens of thousands. And fully a third of these people are going to vote by mail, and they won't even know that their vote doesn't get counted. And the other two-thirds who show up, they'll be, they'll be told, oh, well, there's something wrong here. Fill out this provisional ballot right. instead. So what happens when they fill out the provisional <laughs> ballot? They think they voted. They go home, and... And it goes, oh, 767,023, that's three quarters of a million provisional ballots were cast in 08 and thrown in the garbage. Now, whose ballots? Wow. Kennedy and I worked with uh, Harvard statisticians and, the, um, and uh, the U.S. Civil Rights Commission. The analysis was that if you are black, the chance that your vote will be spoiled or thrown away on technical grounds is 900% higher than if you're white. 500% higher if you're Latino, and if you are um, an, a Native American, forget about it. And I know you think the Native American, the res vote doesn't count, but it's concentrated in Nevada, in Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, where we have the big congressional and Senate races which are down to the wire like this. So when we talk about stealing an election, don't think so much even about Obama. We got seven to 12 Senate races right on the edge. I don't care who's elected, but I would like it not to be an unelected junta 
chosen by Carl Rove's Data Trust Machine. Amazing. Greg Pallas, you're brilliant as oh, always. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the great work you're doing. And the book, again, is Billionaires and, yeah. And billionaires and Ballot Band. It's like, there, show it over here? Yeah. There, <laughs> there, there you go. There you go. Billionaires and Ballot Band. It's how to steal an election. Nine easy steps with Bobby Kennedy and a 50-page comic book by Ted Rawl. Don't leave out my great penman. There you go. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks. a lot. Bye.